Hey there YouTube, this is Justin and you're watching Alternative Drummer. What we're gonna be doing is actually talking about how to set up a home teaching studio uh, to be able to teach lessons over the internet using services like Google Meet or Microsoft Teams or Zoom, I guess, but Zoom actually doesn't work that well and I'm going to go over the reasons why here a little bit later on in this video. I'm a drum instructor and during the pandemic, uh, you know, basically everybody moved everything online and started teaching over the internet. And I was doing this as well and I had a few different setups, but I really wanted to configure something that I thought worked really well and gave the best quality lessons to my students who were paying me money to teach them over the internet. I devised this system. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this is basically just how I did it. And when I was devising this system, I had a few different requirements in mind. One of them was I wanted to have multiple cameras. I didn't just want one single camera like you're looking at right here. I wanted to be able to switch the view to show my foot and see what my bass drum pedal was doing. Also to have an overhead view, which is also very helpful. And I wanted, you know, my face to be in camera as well. And I wanted a way to be able to switch between those. And I wanted high quality sound. And I wanted to be able to see my student, uh, you know, good enough to where I could tell what they were playing. So basically through trial and error, I came up with this system and you could actually use this same setup for online streaming. Like if you want to stream your drums over YouTube or Twitch or something like that, this system will work just as well for that. And in fact, I do that too sometimes with the same exact setup. The primary focus of this video is going to be for other drum instructors. Speaking of that, if you're interested in taking online lessons with me, you can email me at alternativedrummer at outlook.com and I'll reply with rates and availability. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this video. So basically I'm breaking this video up into two parts. The first part is the hardware you're gonna need. The second part is the software you're gonna need and how to configure it. So first off, let's talk about hardware. So the first thing you're going to need is electronic drums. Uh, some of you out there watching this probably already have some, but if you don't, and you don't really know anything about electronic drums, this video is a good place to start. You could also check out the channel 65 Drums as well as eDrums Workshop. Both of those guys do really good job at explaining all the ins and outs of electronic drums. And you could really go down a rabbit hole getting into electronic drum videos with those two YouTubers. So I highly recommend both of their channels. Anyway, if you want just a basic setup, a really good one to consider is the Alesis Nitro Mesh. It's been around for several years already. It's a entry level set, but it works good. It sounds decent-ish. It sounds good enough, basically. And the trigger response is good. They're very inexpensive and they don't take up a lot of room. So the Alesis Nitro Mesh is a good option. Another good option would be the Yamaha DTX 6K series. These are only about $999, which I know is kind of expensive, but compared to some of the other options out there, that's pretty cheap. And it gives you a really, really fantastic drum module and all the basic components you will need uh, to start with your electronic drum set. Aside from that, basically any option from Roland is going to be a good one. Uh, their drums can get quite expensive, so keep that in mind when you're shopping around. All right, next up, and probably the most important thing aside from the drums themselves, is you're going to need a decently fast computer, a pretty powerful computer. Um, I'm doing this tutorial with a MacBook Pro, uh, which is from 2015. Uh, so mine actually isn't like a super powerful, you know, powerhouse of a computer, but it's pretty good. MacBooks are pretty powerful in general. Um, gaming PCs work really well because they have dedicated video cards. Uh, anything that has a dedicated video card in general will give you a better performance in OBS, which is the software we're going to be using. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't want to be using a really, really old PC. Uh, it's just not going to perform very well, though it could be done if you lowered your resolution low enough and set your settings low enough, which will hurt the quality a little bit, but if it's all you have, you could actually do that. But if you can get a powerful computer, I highly recommend doing so. Next on the list are webcams. Now you can use your internal webcam on your computer. However, it's really best to have multiple cameras in my opinion, and ones that I really like a lot are by the company Spidal or Speedal. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but I found them on Amazon. They are wide angle cameras, which is very nice because it captures a lot of the drums and you'll see a little bit later on uh, what that actually looks like. I'll show you the cameras. And they're very inexpensive. They're only about 40 bucks 
and they seem to work on all platforms such as Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So the Spidal webcams are really good. I'll post a link down below to those where you can pick them up for yourself. There will also be a full write-up on my website, alternativedrummer.com, that features all of this stuff in detail. Uh, so if you'd rather just read a document about how to do all this, you could check that out down below too. In addition to webcams, you're also going to need something to mount those webcams on, such as tripods and stands. One thing that I have that I really like is this really cool laptop stand that I picked up from Amazon. Um, it not only holds my laptop, it also has this gooseneck camera mount on it, or phone mount, uh, that you can attach a webcam or a phone to. So that actually comes in really handy and that takes care of one of my tripod needs. One of the other webcam holders that I'm using is actually this little adapter that I found on Amazon that allows me to use a standard microphone stand and it just screws on the end of the microphone stand so I can basically use a fully extended boom microphone stand with the camera mounted to that where I can place it above my drums and get a nice overhead view. And finally, the last camera mount that I'm using is this clamp mount that I basically just have clamped onto one of my floor tom legs and it's holding the webcam and that way I can get a nice view of my foot that the students can see when I'm playing the drums. Yep, I'm suddenly wearing a hat now. So uh, the next thing you're probably gonna need is a USB mixer or an audio interface. Uh, I actually keep going back and forth on what I'm using in this setup. Sometimes I have a mixer there. At the moment I have an audio interface. It's just a PreSonus i2, I think is what it's called, uh, audio interface, which is just a two channel audio interface uh, so what I have to do is actually bridge my drum module connection to a mono signal and then have one input left over for my microphone while I'm teaching. If I'm just streaming, then I can have both uh, channels plugged in to the audio interface for the drum so it'll be in stereo. However, being in mono for teaching really doesn't make a big difference because most of the chat apps are in mono anyways. So it's not really going to make that big of a difference if you only have two channels. Most drum sets have a mono output if you just use one of the outputs on the drum module. However, mine is an ATV and it actually doesn't do that. It's always in stereo. So basically what I have to do is send both the lines out into a little adapter that combines both signals and then plug it into my audio interface into channel two. Another option to consider are some Behringer mixers and other things like that. As long as you have a USB connection and it's compatible with your computer, most USB mixers will work for this application. I'll post some links down below where you can check them out and uh, give you some ideas as well as the document that I talked about before at alternativedrummer.com. I'll have more of them there that you can check out as well. Also, you're gonna need some headphones. So headphones are very important. Um, there's a lot of them out there. The ones that I'm using right now is this pair of Samson headphones that I actually really like. I'll post a link to these down below as well, as well as some other options on my website. Then lastly, as far as the hardware goes, you're going to need a microphone. The microphones I like to use while teaching are headset mics. That way I don't have to hold a microphone. I don't have to have a microphone stand that I'm hitting while I'm playing the drums. I just put the headset mic on and it's you know basically easy to use and sounds pretty good. So I'll post a link to some of those down below. They're very affordable these days. Now for certain mixers, there's actually a Behringer mixer that I posted a link to on my website that has a headset microphone input on it. So that's actually pretty cool. And I'm actually considering buying one of those mixers myself. That way I could use like a gaming headset, uh, which would have headphones and a microphone combined in one device, which would save me from having to use two different things. Sometimes the headset microphone can get in the way a little bit of the headphones, but I can usually make it work. Yep, wearing a hat again. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to hook all this stuff up. Okay, let's talk about everything and how it's hooked up here. So here is the seat behind my drums. Here's my drum module, my ATV XD3. And down below here on this uh, laptop stand, I actually have this accessory tray. And this came with this, uh, something I forgot to mention before, but that's really nice. Another good reason to buy this particular tray. Um, it comes with this accessory stand. So I have my audio interface right here. So my drums are running out from the output of the drum module and basically bridge the two connections together like I was saying right here and plugged into uh, input number two on my audio interface. Input number one, I have my wireless headset microphone, which is that, and here's the other end of that right here. Um, so that way I have both my mic and my uh, drums plugged into the interface. And then if we go up here to the laptop, 
you can see that I have OBS open and it's already switching as you can see and I'm going to go into a screen capture here in a little bit and show you how to set all this stuff up uh, so you don't have to look through the camcorder view uh, but this is uh, basically this is set up right here and then if we go over to the drums we have a camera up above right there and then we have one down here for my foot for my pedal and then we also have another one here on this gooseneck that's part of this uh, laptop stand. And MacBooks notoriously have very few ports on them, and mine is no exception. It only has two USB ports. The new ones uh, have USB-C, but mine actually has standard USB ports on it. Uh, but as you can see here, I only have one plugged in there. This is for all the webcams. And on the other side, I have my audio interface plugged in. Um, now, how am I getting all these webcams plugged in? With a hub. So let me show you how I have that set up. Okay, so the USB hub, I actually just glued to the bottom of this uh, stand right here. And so I just have all the cameras plugged in right there. And it just keeps it neat and out of the way. So that's pretty nice. And as you can see here, if I go over here, I have the audio interface down on this little accessory tray. And then this is actually something really cool right here. Um, if you don't have Bluetooth in your drum module, like I don't, you can buy one of these, which is a little uh, Bluetooth uh, audio adapter. These are basically made for cars, so you can play your phone through your uh, car speakers. So you just plug this into the audio input jack on the back of your module, and then if you want to play along to something on Bluetooth, all you have to do is turn this on, and then pair it to your phone, and then you can play Bluetooth. And what's nice about that is that's just gonna route into OBS uh, with everything else from the drums, so you don't have to worry about hooking up any audio uh, device into OBS. It's already mixed in through your drum module, so that's all taken care of there. Okay, you can see that I have OBS open here, and uh, sorry if there's a little delay in my voice, but doing the screen capture at the same time as all this is pretty heavy load on this older uh, MacBook. But anyway, let's go ahead and here to settings, so let's just click here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is check your stream settings. Now this really has nothing to do with the teaching aspect, you know, chatting. Uh, but if you do want to stream to YouTube or Twitch, you're going to set that up here. And you just select your service from this drop-down list. And then uh, which server, you know, just keep it on primary. And then down below here, I already have mine connected, but there'll, there'll be a button to connect your account. So just click that and it'll set it up for you. You don't really have to worry about entering in any information. Uh, like you used to have to do, uh, it basically does it all for you these days, which is pretty nice. So the next thing you're going to want to do is just go to Output and make sure you're selected uh, Advanced Mode here. If you do Simple, you're not going to have a lot of the stuff that we're going to need to change. So first thing you want to do is just basically ignore the audio track thing here, just leave it on one. But the encoder, this is actually very important. So what you want to do is make sure you have a hardware encoder selected. You can see here I have three in my list. I have uh, Apple VT H.264 hardware encoder, uh, software encoder, and then just X.264. The difference is, is a hardware encoder uses your video card to process, or to basically, uh, yeah, to process the video while it's streaming or recording. And this is good uh, because it doesn't wear on your CPU usage and it leaves your computer resources open to do other things. So this is actually very important. If you have a computer that has an external video, video card or a dedicated graphics card, rather, you will have this option. Uh, most MacBooks will have a VT H.264 hardware encoder. And if you have a PC, you may see something that says uh, NVIDIA NVENC encoder or an AMD hardware encoder. Uh, if you only have H.264, you'll just have to deal with that and probably set your settings a lot lower uh, to make it work. Uh, but if you have a hardware encoder, then you should be good to go uh, to use the standard settings. So basically, I have mine set up to stream at 720p. And in order to do that, what you want to do is have your bitrate set at 2500 kbps. If you're doing full HD, then you're going to want to have that set to 5000 kbps. You also want to have your keyframe set to two. I don't know why, but everybody says to do that, so I did it and it seems to be good. <laughs> okay, so next let's go over to recording. This is if you wanna record your OBS sessions. 
And basically, I just have it set up the same as I did uh, before. And now I don't have rescale output selected because you'll see why here in a minute. If we go down here to video, I already have my video base canvas and output resolution uh, or set to 720p. So basically, uh, everything is just recording and streaming at 720p. So that's good for my system. If you have a weaker system, then you may want to set this lower. Uh, what you could do is just go down here and set this down to one of these other numbers. And in fact, I actually have two profiles set up. You'll see. Let me close this. Let's go here. OK. And then if I go up in here to profile, new lessons, you see how that changed that. And then if we go here to scene collection, new lessons, now it's going to change all of that. So you can see this actually, if we go back into my settings, now you can see I have this much lower. Let's go to video. Now you can see I'm actually outputting at 640 by 360. The reason why I have this is if I'm getting a lot of lag, which happens sometimes, uh, if I have a web browser open and stuff too, then I can switch to this profile and that usually takes care of it because this is less demanding on the system. Okay, so that's how you set up OBS. Now let's move on to the plugins. The first plugin that we're going to be talking about is this advanced scene switcher plugin. And I, I talked about that a bit before. You're going to have to download that. Now this advanced scene switcher is extremely confusing. <laughs> but the way I got it to work is to go into macro here. And I set up two macros. Macros are basically like little programs. So what I did is I, I created one macro that if you read this macro, it says if seen for exactly 12 seconds, current scene is seen. That's what my scene number one is named. Scene number two is just named scene two. So if it's for 12 seconds, then it will switch scene to scene two right here using cut. Cut just basically just switches scenes without any transition. I don't have transitions enabled, again, because my computer is pretty old and that it also bogs down the system a bit. Now, for the second macro, it's the same thing. It's just the opposite. So here we have if scene is scene 2 for exactly 12 seconds. Current scene is scene 2. Switch scene to scene. So scene is scene 1 in my case. I know that's a bit confusing, but that's just how I just leave them named the default. Um, now, there's probably another way to do this uh, with this advanced scene switcher, but this is the easiest way I found. So if I stop this, you can see that it'll stop switching scenes. Let's go here. And you can see now it's just on the overhead cam. I can do this manually. So there's my front camera. Overhead. Now let's go back to the advanced scene switcher and turn it on. And you'll see that it'll, it'll start changing by itself. OK, so now I'm not going to touch anything. And it's just going to switch scenes. After 12. There it goes. Okay, so <clears throat> that's how you use that. The other thing that you're going to want to do is start your virtual camera. After you get all this set up, you just click this button right here, start virtual camera. Okay, and now we can actually minimize OBS. We don't need to have that open. And if we open up our web browser, let's go to meet.google.com. Start a new meeting. And this is probably going to load a bit slowly because I have so many things running on the computer. Once that pops up, you're going to see my output from OBS from the virtual camera. There it is. OK, so that's how it works. Now, you should see it switch scenes here, too. There it goes. Now that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think I am. So we can stop virtual camera now. And uh, let's get back to the uh, rest of this video. All right, that's going to be all for this video, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and educational. Uh, leave a comment down below. Do you do a setup like this? What do you use? Give me some details. I'm curious to know what all of you guys out there are doing. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all really soon. Have a great day. Later.